Look, Clara, I've been following you for a bit. I think you're a really good comedic actress. Do you have an agent for booking? Or they was like, no, I have an agent for nothing. I don't have any agents. It's me. And he was like, okay, well, would you want to audition for a couple of comedy things that I've got coming up? I was like, yes, please. This is all I've ever wanted to do. As we're well into the holiday season, I want to revisit some of my favourite conversations. And this week's guest broke into the acting industry in her 40s, all thanks to social media. Meet Clara Batten, TikTok comedy content creator, actress and author of Gin and Phonics. In this short episode, Clara tells me about the differences of being an actor then and now, how social media can bring exciting and unexpected opportunities and why she wouldn't do stand up. If you're an actor looking for new ways of putting yourself out there, then this episode is for you. But before you start the video, I need your help. We have entered the British Podcast Awards and the listener's choice category is now open for voting. You can directly support our show by voting for us. Just click the link in the description, look up Anatomy of a Leader and get voting. Voting closes on 29th of August, so please get in there quick. And as always, please click that follow or subscribe button wherever you're listening. Without further ado, here is Clara Batten. When I first tried to be an actress back in my 20s, uh, well, late teens actually, I moved to London when I was 17 to, um, and I got an agent then because I'd done an, a sort of intensive course during my A-levels. And back then, it was, there, was n there was no way of uh, doing anything that you wanted to do without training, as, you know, going through training, then you get an agent, then you go to auditions, then you get it or you don't. Because actually, I'm, you know, I've got an acting agent now and I'm doing auditions quite often. And, you know, I've only got two out of, two parts out of, you know, probably 25, 30 auditions that I've had since getting this agent. So if I was purely relying on that for my passion in performing... I wouldn't be performing much. And I would be doing what I did in my 20s, which is going, you know what, I've given this a good shot for a few years. I'm not making a decent living out of what I love doing most days. I'm getting one episode here for, you know, a few hours filming, one episode there, one day's filming there. And then the rest of the time I'm doing my day job and I'm doing pretty well at it. So, you know what, I'm just going to... When my agent retired, I just went... I'm not going to bother, like, really stressing about finding another agent. And, you know, I, I'm early 20s now, and I've given it a shot for a few years, and, you know, I'm doing really well, so I'll just carry on down that route. Whereas now, you can use all these different platforms to get yourself out there, to do your own... to perform your own stuff, to do stand-up, to do... I mean, there's uh, one creator. Do you know Mammy Banter? Oh. Uh, so she's an Irish comedian. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, she was doing sketches online. And from that, she got a random stand-up comedy gig at the Edinburgh Festival. And she was like, I never even thought I wanted to do stand-up comedy. But then she basically, I said to her, because I'm friends with her, and I messaged her, I said, mate, you, are you doing stand-up? Because she was doing similar stuff to me, like sketches, you know, playing different characters. And I said, are you doing stand-up at the Edinburgh Festival? And she was like, I know, I know, mate. I bet you know what? I can't not do it because there are people who try and be stand-up comedians like all their life and don't get an opportunity like that. And they're still on the circuit in, you know, pubs. And, and I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. So I'm just going to do it and just sod it and say yes to everything. And if I land flat on my face, whatever. And now she's doing sell-out tours of her stand-up, you know, Amazing. all around the UK mm -hmm. and she's going abroad. So, again, you know, there was only one way you could ever be a stand-up comedian before, and that was going on the stand-up com comedy circuit, trying to get gigs in. You know, if you manage to get the comedy store, wow, that's amazing. If you manage to get a slot at the end of a festival. But if, you, if you're putting stuff out there online, you're getting immediate views, and those immediate views can then translate into anything really in life it could end up the world's endless mm -hmm. you know the it, it's the the possibilities can go on and on and also you never know who's seeing it so you don't even need millions of followers you get one influential person seeing it 
And you know, like I said to you before, um, well, no, sorry, I emailed you about this, um, that you get one influential person seeing you. They don't need to be famous. They don't need to be a celebrity. But, the, for example, this one was a film director for me. And he was just following me. He didn't know that I trained or, do, you know, was an actress back in the day. He just got in touch and said, look, Clara, I've been following you for a bit. And I think you're a really good comedic actress. Like, do you have an agent for for booking? Or I was like, no, I have an agent for nothing. I don't have any agents. It's me. And he was like, okay, well, would you want to audition for a couple of comedy things that I've got coming up? I was like, yes, please. This is all I've ever wanted to do. And um, auditioned, got got a part in the film he was doing. And then off the back of that, an agent was already following me. She didn't even realise that's what I wanted to do. Day the Christmas film came out, she went home, watched it, came back, messaged me. Hi, can we have a meeting? I've just watched your film. I've been following you for a while and just seen the film you're in and think you're great can we chat had a chat that evening next morning I went yes please and uh, then I got on the act so where is it used to be like you have to genuinely go to casting directors doors and knock on them and go hey here's my CV and no I'd really like I know that you you cast you know Emmerdale and I've been a massive fan I really want to you know play a part in it will you give me an audition now you can literally just be like putting your own stuff out like a showreel mm -hmm. showcase and then someone can get in touch and just be like i've been following you and i'm an agent i've been following you i'm a director i've been following you i do st stand-up comedy bookings i think you'll be brilliant you know and mm -hmm. suddenly you're getting these opportunities where you don't even realize who the hell's following you out there yeah. and then and yeah like you said it's it's more prevalent now than ever because there's different ways of mm -hmm. doing it i think what's interesting is also it's a testing ground for yes. if you're if you're a comedic actor or a, a comedian you know partly what you need is you need to get that feedback about what's working and what's not yeah and here i mean you're talking about posting three times a day i mean you could be posting 10 times a day if you really wanted to yeah. just to test any kind of content and see what works yeah um so i think from that perspective in itself is also very very useful yeah particularly um, for like you said things like stand up comedy that you the only way was to get a slot and basically advertise it as this is you know you you you, know, you can get like quarter price tickets because i'm just testing material before i go to edinburgh yeah. or and people could then go along and even famous people you know mm -hmm. famous comedians did that they're what well, they still do but they you know they'll just say you know, you you can normally see, you know, Frankie Boyle uh, for 40 quid, but go mm -hmm. and see him for 15 quid at the comedy store because he's testing stuff out before he goes on his big tour. And now you just get online and do that on and see how it you goes. You have an audience already. Yeah. Any stand up on the cards for you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I don't. I, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> Genuinely. Oh, my goodness. I, I think I'm getting sweaty palms just thinking about it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I know. Um, I, th I think the closest I would get to something like that would be something like um, a comedic sort of improv uh, s s show, you know, so like a few actors would get together a, a little bit like have I uh, not have I got news for you? Who signs it anyway? Like that that uh, thing that used to be on TV where the actors would be there people would shout stuff from the audience and you'd have to think up stuff or um create little skits mm -hmm. out of you know they'd say like oh so and so's just come back and found her, her his wife's in bed with so and so and then uh, the dog comes in and blah 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 you know and then you have to create it mm -hmm. but i that's probably the closest thing i'd get to stand up i feel up. like it's more terrifying doing that no, because you're still, you're still, um, no, because I, f I find that in a normal setting with friends, people I've just met, I can be spontaneously funny and I can, I, I can, um, I can make people laugh just by being my natural self or being a bit, you know, silly or, or creating a bit of a sort of alter ego while I'm doing it, but to actually sit and write <clears throat> jokes to be told by me as me 
with no with no feedback, no no back and forth, just like for an so hour it's standing other on there, almost like a like a theatre setting. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's mm. yeah, maybe it's that. I hadn't thought of that. Mm. Yeah, maybe it's as a being like standalone. It's just you. All eyes are on you. Yeah, uh, right. yeah, mm. and then also all eyes are on me. Just saying, pretty much storytelling and hoping there's a gag at the end of it that mm. people will laugh at. So what what I will find funny, the joke might either fall flat or they'll find it funny and then I'll be like, God, where was I? Uh, do, where do I go from here? And then I go, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, I, I don't know, it's something about standing as yourself, not playing a character, mm. just talking, trying to well, make people like being laugh. being on stage and being a stand-up, you are in character already. Yeah, but as yourself, mm. you are still being yourself. You're not... I think that's because I find public speaking quite hard. Mm. So I think it's when I'm when I'm myself just public speaking to people, I find that harder than acting out a thing or like people wouldn't people don't normally believe that because they're like but but when you know if you walk into a pub and there's like five of us mates with five people you don't know, you'll just walk up to the table and be like, "All right guys, like da, 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 you know and just be like completely extrovert and make people laugh in that scenario. But I don't like being myself on stage, weirdly. Mm. You've been listening to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. If you love listening to these inspiring leadership stories from all walks of life and would like to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe or follow wherever you are listening. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next episode.